everyone. Sorry about that. I'm Carly. This is still virtual safari and we had a little bit of an internet problem. So I apologize for that. Uh, we are just kind of at the mercy of the Wi-Fi here at the zoo and it can change. So I hope we can get everyone who was there back on because we have Juna and Tenzing right behind me and I really don't want anyone to miss that. I think everyone needs a smile on this Monday. So we want to help bring that to you. So we've got Juna and Tenzing and Sarah's answering your questions. Hi, Eric. Thanks for sticking with us. Hi, Addison. Sorry about that, everyone. We just wanted to kind of wipe the slate, slate clean and try to get started instead of waiting for that Wi-Fi to reconnect. So it looks like Lori says she can't hear. Let's see what's going on there. Can anyone hear? This is an audio check. Jen is saying, she can't hear. Kathy is saying hello, so I'll just keep trying. We're not really sure what's going on here, folks, but we are just definitely trying to make it work for you all today because we definitely want you to see what's going on. Missy says she can hear. Awesome. Thank you, Missy. Thank you, Whitney. Oh, there goes Juna. So we were with Sarah. We've been feeding Juna. Uh, Sarah was just saying that she is about probably 450 pounds now. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she we is... haven't weighed her yet this week, but that's what we're estimating based <laughs> on her, her growth. <laughs> so yeah, she was, she's been gaining weight at a pretty steady clip. I think the last time we did a live on her, she had just passed that 300 mark. Yeah. Last week she was 436 pounds. So oh. yeah, probably around 450 this week. Oh my gosh. Thank you everyone who's confirming you can hear. I just wanted to make sure um, that some people could, so we know it's not our problem because we definitely would have worked to figure that out. So keep those questions coming for Tenzing. I can still see your comments no matter what. <laughs> so hi to Cindy. Thanks everyone for sticking with us through those technical difficulties. Oh, that might have been the problem, Lisa. Thank you. So what's Juna's personality like as she's kind of, you know, getting older, bigger, and more amazing every day? Yeah, that, that last part's true for <laughs> sure. Yeah, her personality's really, really coming out. She's very playful. She's very um, already pretty opinionated. She can kind of tell her mom if she wants to go somewhere. If she doesn't like something, um, her mom kind of gives it back to her too. So they have pretty similar personalities in that way, but she likes to try to play fight with mom and, and practice, um, you know, building up her strength with, with her mom who weighs, you know, 4,000 pounds. So quite a bit more than her though, but Tenzing is very, very patient with her. Yeah. So you're looking at Tenzing right now. That's mom. They're having a great day today. They're getting some celery, some grass hay, one of their favorites. Juna got some brows, looks like, from Caitlin over there. So she's just nibbling on that. Not totally eating it, but more just enjoying. Kind of mouthing it. Here she comes. Running with oh, it. Oh, forget it, she says. I want to come back to mom and probably go back to the wallowing pool if I had to guess. <laughs> Hi, Juna. Susie from San Diego. <laughs> Juna did figure out how to swim last week in this little area. We call it a hot tub because we can heat it in the winter, but it's a little bit more shallow than the pool. And she did she did figure out how to swim with Tenzing that last week. So hopefully she'll come in again. So she's using that prehensile lip of hers to grab some of the grass through the fence. And Sarah says, I'll just feed her. You know, you don't have to you don't have to go for the for the stuff that's just grown on the side. I hope you all can kind of see. It's kind of oh, tough to see because she's got so much mud caked on it, but her horn is kind of starting to just slightly make grow an in. Appearance. Yeah, yep. make an appearance. It's just that fingernail material, right? Yep, keratin. Yeah. Keratin. So it's just going to take a while to grow in. Um, hi, Jennifer. That's a great question. Mom's horn is not filed down for safety. The rhinos can rub it against stuff and file it down or sharpen it up however they see fit. Greater one horned rhinos, unlike black rhinos, don't really use their horns for fighting the way Rudy would in the wild. So they don't need them to be that long and sharp. They usually use their incisors more. So that's just how Tenzing prefers to have her horn. Hi to Nicholas. I think that is James's kid there. So hi, hi to Logan, he's six. So no, we don't alter any of our rhinos, rhinos horns, <laughs> not Rudy's, Bandu's, Tenzing's, or when it comes in, little Juna's. But that was a great question because it definitely looks like something we might have done. It, it looks that kind of nice and precise. Yeah. Let's 
see. So when she's kind of nibbling, are there things she prefers? What are you trying to get, little girl? <laughs> yeah, she does prefer the browse. So the tree branches and leaves that we get either flown in or from uh, on, our, on our zoo grounds locally. She really likes that the best, it seems like. Um, and then obviously whatever her mom's eating, she also wants to try that. <laughs> uh, Jillian, Gillian, sorry again. Uh, she wants to know how many hours a day does Juna sleep? Ooh, good question. Um, she take, I mean, much like a toddler, you know, she's about what a toddler would be now. So she'll take naps um, throughout the day in the mud wallow with her mom out here, but normally they come inside around two, two o'clock off the outside yard and she is crashed out. She's, <laughs> after a full day of playing out here, she gets pretty tired. So she'll sleep for a couple hours and then be up again in the evening. Especially with this summerish weather we're having this week. We're definitely getting a heat wave here in Denver. So they love the ability to wallow in that pool. Um, so someone asked what the difference is between uh, Tenzing and Rudy are. Well, they're different species. So they're native to different parts of the world. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So Rudy, has, he's a black rhino. So he's native to Africa. Tenzing is a greater one horned rhino. So she's native to Asia. Um, you might have also heard the species Indian rhino. It's the same kind. So um, animals like Tenzing and Juna, they're native to India and Nepal. So they have um, a few differences. The, the best way to tell this kind of rhino is all those armor folded skin plates. That's, a, that's kind of the, their biggest characteristic. If I had to guess, I think they're making their way back to the pool. <laughs> back towards that water. He for Christine is, uh, you know, doing the hose and, you know, just making it really nice and chilled out for them. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Deb. We're happy to bring you guys a look at Juna. We all just want a smile. And I know Juna brings a smile to our team's faces <laughs> every day. So we thought, why not bring her to you all? Uh, Logan asks, does Juna like splashing or does she just try it out in the water. She does like splashing. She'll kind of use her head to, to play around in the water. And yes, or the other day we actually saw her using her feet too, to kind of stomp in the mud and make <laughs> the mud splash up on her too. So she'll roll around, she'll use her head, she'll use whatever she can to get all the water and mud on her. So one of the last times we saw her, she was very much close to mom, spending a lot of time, which had been different from those first couple weeks where uh -huh. she was a bit independent. Where is she on that spectrum now? She's kind of more more on the independent scale. She's a little Again. bit more independent. Yeah, oh, she's, she's going going back the other way. She'll she'll run around and Tenzing really seems to trust her too, know that she'll come back if she if Tenzing starts walking away, Juno will follow her. Um, but you know, sometimes Tenzing will just be in the mud wallow and Juna's literally running circles around her. And <laughs> Tenzing knows she's not going to try to do anything too dangerous. Um, let's see. Jennifer wants to know if you had to, where would we draw blood from a rhino? And we do have to sometimes. We do. Yep. Um, Tenzing actually just got a voluntary blood draw a couple weeks ago from Keeper Chris back there. And we do it, um, on their foot. That's, on their foot. Yeah. So, um, their skin, as you can see, it's really thick in a lot of places, but one of the places that their skin is more soft is on their feet. So they have a vein actually in the front and on the back that you can get it, um, get some blood from. <laughs> Tensing showing your big mouth right now or incisors or drooly bits. Um, very similar to the way we do phlebotomy for Rudy. We get it from kind of his ankle area yep, yep. and we did a, a virtual safari on that. So you can watch that if you want to learn more about phlebotomy and it's all voluntary. We just kind of give Juna or not Juna Tenzing treats yes. while she's hanging out. And if she walks away, she walks away. We'll yeah, just we'll try, try again another, another time. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, Jillian wants to know, do they make any sounds? They do. They make a few sounds. Um, they're, they're one that you hear the most is they moo like a cow. It literally sounds like a cow mooing. Um, Juna has actually done it a few times too. It's pretty, Aww. pretty precious. Um, and then they also do something called a whistle snort. I know you can do a good one. <laughs> <Weep -poo>. Yep. <laughs> Weep -poo. That's what, they make that sound too. Um, and then they also chuff. So, um, like if, if our male walks into the barn and, and Tenzing is in one of the stalls, they'll both kind of announce themselves and kind of blow blow air out of their nostrils to let each other know that they're there. So they, they picked up where Chris was spraying the water, <laughs> so now they're back over there. I really want to be under a sprinkler hose right now. I know, I want that hose to go further. <laughs> um, Quentin is nine and he wants to know how many calves a rhino can have in a lifetime. So they live into their 40s and the females can start having babies when they're around seven years old and they'll have a baby 
if they have a baby every time they can, it's about every three or four years. Um, so you're probably really good at math, <laughs> but maybe, you know, maybe that adds up to seven or so calves in a lifetime. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Here goes Judith. She's going swimming. Yay. Oh, I'm so jealous of this rhino it right now. so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got to assume there's probably quite a bit of a uh, poop in that water, but you know, even today, I'm, I might consider it. It's real clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nate wants to know what other animals they're closely related to. They are related to horses. And then if you guys have been to the zoo and seen our tapers, Benny and Rennie, our Malayan tapers, they are part of the same family. So odd toed ungulates is how they're classified. Um, so horses is, yeah, probably the, the closest thing that, that we know well that they're related to. Yeah. Hi, Ashley. I wish we could say when we know we're going to reopen, but the decision is not up to us. So we are just patiently waiting for that approval from the state. Um, we've done a lot of work here to make it safe for everyone when they come back. So we can't wait to see you when we get that approval. And you will not miss the announcement when we reopen. I promise you, it will be everywhere. And I totally suggest signing up for our email list so you can be among the first to know uh, how you can get back here when you can. Um, oh, hi, Kayleen from West Virginia. She wants to know how long is the rhino pregnant for? They are pregnant for 16 months. Woo. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> Ashley's wondering if they ever have more than one at a time. No, they don't. They, They're uh, pretty they come big. out so big. Yeah, they come out, average is about 150 pounds. So um, if they had twins, they wouldn't have a very high survival rate. Oh, Gail says hi to Chris. Um, Chris is our awesome keeper back there who has done a lot of these Juna lives. Um, and June is very special to her. So, um, hi Davis. He's three. He wants to know where dad is. That's a great question. He is um, actually not, he doesn't live at this zoo. He lives at another zoo, but this kind of species, they live by themselves. So um, Tenzing being with her baby Juna, that's the only time that this kind of rhino likes to be with other rhinos is if it's with their babies. But even in a few years, once Juna gets really big, Tenzing's gonna wanna be by herself and Juna's gonna wanna be by herself. So they are a solitary species of rhino. Yeah, and dad is actually at the Omaha Henley, yep. Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium. Yes. And we got his sperm and brought it to Denver. And then with the help of um, our Dr. Annika Moresco and a doctor from Cincinnati's crew, um, we were able to artificially inseminate Tenzing and get Junie here. So Bandu and Tenzing just haven't found their moment yet <laughs> to breed, uh, but we do hope eventually someday they can all still be SSP partners. Maybe the next baby. <laughs> Maybe the next one. I think I think Tenzing's like, I don't want to be pregnant yeah, right now. Yeah, she's like, what? Already? <laughs> 16 no. months? I, don't, I, gotta, I don't have time for that right now. Um, hi, Winnie. Yeah, so I hope that kind of answered it. Bandu is an SSP match for Tenzing, so we hope someday. Um, but when he first got here, he was a little too young, and we just didn't want to miss that window for for Tenzing to be able to breed and then we gave it a couple tries and then we really wanted to make sure Tenzing could contribute her genetics to the SSP so we went with AI. Um, oh you're welcome Kayleen we're so happy that you're joining us. <laughs> so they're kind of at the gate right now they might be getting a little hot and ready to go inside. They are the yep they've got a really good internal clock. <laughs> we bring them in about two o'clock and they know it's it's getting close. Um, what do you think is the most kind of surprising or exciting thing you've seen Juna do in the last month or so? The swimming. The swimming was really, really exciting for us to see. The species of rhino loves water. They are good swimmers, believe it or not, which is kind of hard to believe for a lot of people that rhinos can swim. Um, this kind specifically really likes swimming. So um, once she actually found that she could, you know, support herself and swim without just standing in the water, that was awesome for us to see because that also means that she can go to other yards a little bit sooner because there are big pools so we wanted to make sure she would be able to be safe in the yards with the big pools and be able to to swim yeah we have certainly missed guests but i think one of the unintended benefits of the closure has been tenzing feels really comfortable bringing juna into this yard yeah. they feel really comfortable exploring it which will help speed that ability for them to explore other yards here in Toyota Elephant Passage a lot sooner. Definitely. Because this is just one of five. It does have an awesome pool, but we have the one where you would see the demos. We have the one near the Gibbons. We have the one that's outside of Village Hall. So a lot of great, a lot of great spots for them to hang out. But we wanted them both to feel very comfortable, at least in this one, first. 
Whew, it is warm today. <laughs> I'm like sweating under this mask. It is gross. Um, hi, Daphne from Nashville. I hope you get to Denver soon too. And yeah, no, we don't have that rhino cam anymore. It's pretty useless now that, you know, Juno's spending so much time outside. We didn't really need that indoor camera very much anymore. Um, do we give Juna any kind of medication through fruit anymore? You know, when she was first born, we were kind of giving her some mashed banana and things like that. Yeah, she had she had a little bit of gut, gut <laughs> trouble when she was a few weeks old, um, which has worked itself out, literally. Um, but no, the only thing that we give them is um, actually the first first week of the month, something that horses get a lot is a, a psyllium product to, so that they can, there's no sand build up in their in their intestines. So um, now June is old enough to start getting that now that she's eating solid food. So that's the only kind of, I guess, medication you could call it, um, kind of supplement that she's on right now. Whitney wants to know if they'll be part of our animal demonstrations in the future. Yeah, like the Toy to Elven Passage yeah. demonstrations. Yeah, we do, we do have rhino demonstrations. So um, I know we're not planning on having demonstrations for a while with all this stuff going on, but um, yeah, our rhinos definitely participate in those. So it'll probably be a little while before um, Tenzing and Juna get to explore that yard. Um, but yeah, it, she can certainly do the demonstrations in the future. And they don't have as many trained behaviors as our elephants do, but they certainly can, you know, get themselves out there to the peninsula and take treats and be really fun to watch. So that's a great question, Whitney. Uh, do they give themselves dust baths on days like this or is it mostly just wallowing in mud? Mostly wallowing in the mud. The, the flies are a big part of that too. And of course the sun, um, even those big horse flies, they like to get them. And since their tails are a little bit shorter, they can't get them quite as well as the elephants or the elephants will throw dust on their backs and be able to get those horse flies. But packing on that mud from the mud wallow is one of their best defenses against bugs <laughs> and sun. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm gonna take our last call for questions because I think Juna and Tenzing are <laughs> ready to go inside and get some shade. And I think myself and Sarah are too. So just let us know what else you wanna know about Juna. Uh, Ethan's 10. He wants to know what birds he's hearing. Probably cormorants. Those are grackles. Oh, grackles. Yeah, good ear. Yeah, grackles. They're little blackbirds that you can, they kind of sheen blue, but yeah, you can, they really like nesting around here. <laughs> oh, oh, so there, there, you, some, yep. <laughs> there you go, Ethan. They're grackles. Oh, there's a little fledgling with it. And All they're, the babies are out. And they're loud. <laughs> we love it. Um, <laughs> Logan says, do our rhinos, do rhinos act like dogs? <laughs> it's funny we the other day we um yeah juna we had one of our keepers was playing with the hose with her and she was biting at the water oh <laughs> coming out of the hose kind of like a dog might so yeah sometimes they do really act like dogs um how old is juna in rhino years well she's three months i wonder if he's asking if there's sort of like a human years equivalent yeah maybe like three years old so she's she's pretty much at that toddler age she's getting getting a little bit more dependent still wants to be by mom if something's scary but she also you know has opinions about things too so probably about three years is the equivalent yeah well we're probably gonna wrap up here then that's all the questions that i can see i'll see if there are any more that come in while i'm stalling for time right here <laughs> uh but i hope you all enjoyed your peek at juna our ever-growing girl oh nate wants to know how much they eat a day Tenzin gets about 50 pounds of hay and then she also gets a, a whole bundle of browse and then she also gets some grain like some rhino cereal and a bucket of produce. So all in all Tenzin, the, the mom, she probably gets around 70 pounds of food a, a day I would say. And Juna is still nursing primarily. She still, um, she tries the food but not enough for us to measure to know how much she's actually eating but Juna mostly is still nursing. Uh, hi, Michaela. She says, how much does she weigh? We're guessing around 450 based on her last weight being 430 something. 436 last week. Yep. So probably around 450 this week. Hopefully, hopefully we can get a weight on her in the next couple days. Hi, Emily. We do rhino conservation. We send keepers on trips to places like Nepal and um, where they work with elephants and rhinos. And then with Juna's naming contest where we had people donate a dollar per vote. We were able to donate $5,000 to the International Rhino Fund. Oh, Jillian wants to know, does rain and thunder scare Juna? No, this, uh, this species where they're native to, it, it rains a lot. So um, the rhinos don't 
like wind. That's kind of the thing that bothers them more because they rely so much on their hearing that when it's windy, they can't really hear where sounds are coming from as well. Um, but the rain and thunder doesn't doesn't bother them. If it's if it's a thunderstorm, we'll give them you know the option if they want to go inside or outside. But um, it doesn't seem to bother them so much. Very interesting. Hi, Karen. Um, you know the the kind of post opening future of Zoo to you virtual safaris is a bit up in the air. Uh, the keepers have other jobs they've got to do, especially once we open, as do I. So we'll definitely try to find a way to make sure we can keep bringing you all awesome dynamic content once we reopen, because I know not everyone who watches these videos is local to Denver or can come right back. So, hey, Jennifer, I don't want to give away what we're going to see tomorrow, <laughs> sometimes because it can change kind of last minute. So don't want to make any promises. <laughs> Um, hi, Sarah. We miss you too. The critters are all very happy and well. Thanks for checking in. So that's going to be it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us for another virtual safari. Thank you, Sarah, for standing out here in the heat with me to answer these questions. Um, you all have awesome ones and we just can't wait to see you all back here. But until then, we can't wait to see you for another virtual safari. Bye, everyone.